finished verse number 20. Ahami nasha bhaj yaham aham taya spurati rit swayam paramapurna sat. So what we said here is ahami nasha bhaji means when that ego aham, that ahami, nasha bhaji, when it enjoys the destruction, then what happens? Paramapurna sat. That supreme, infinite existence is revealed. So it's not that that existence comes, but that existence is revealed because it was always there. It was always, always there. And so this ego, now what happens to it? What was the nasha? What was the destruction? So remember, we talked about this term mano nasha, which is the same as what is being meant in this verse. And that nasha is not necessarily the destruction of the body or the mind or the intellect, but it's the destruction of the notion that I am the body, I am the mind, and I am the intellect. This is what we call mano nasha, the destruction of that notion. So ahami, li, ahami nasha bhaj, when that ego is enjoys its own destruction, means its own falsification, then the self is revealed. And the nature of that self is infinite. But now somebody might ask, what about this world? What about this world? Okay, so you say that we falsified the ego, the ego is destroyed or falsified, but what about this world? So let us look at verse number 21. So I'll chant. Idam aham pada bhikya man vaham. Aham ilina ke pialaya sattaya. Together. Idam aham pada bhikya man vaham. So this verse has two interpretations. So first we will look at one interpretation and we go to the next one. It says, Idam aham pada abhikyaham. Idam, idam, this aham, this I pada abhikyaham. Abhikyaham means that which is indicated by the pada aham. Pada means word. So that which is indicated by the word I, what happens to that? Anu aham means following the, the destruction of that ego. What happens? Ahami lina ke api. That total I, that total I also dissolves. Then alaya sattaya because that pure sat or that pure existence is something that it's alaya. Alaya means it doesn't go into laya. It doesn't dissolve. It doesn't come up. It doesn't change. It doesn't do all of that. Alaya sattaya due to the indestructible nature of the self. So if we put this together, following the merger of the individual I, that is anu ahab, following the, the merger of the individual I, the total I also merges. Ahami linake api. And this, which is known as the true, true I, idam aham pada abhikyaham, shines due to its indestructible nature. Alaya sattaya. It shines because of its indestructible nature. When that I, so first we will look at it this way. One way is when that I goes to sleep, what happens? That ego, it goes to sleep, right? It goes to sleep, it becomes dormant. What happens? The whole world becomes dormant with it, right? The whole world also goes to sleep with it. When you and I, when that ego goes to sleep, we don't have the experience of our individuality, but we also don't have an experience of the world. So what it's saying here is, well, think about it, that I is going to sleep, that world is also going to sleep. 
So we, it's not necessarily that the world is still there. The world is very, very much dependent on consciousness. So therefore, that I, which is dependent on consciousness, that world is also dependent on consciousness. In fact, both of them are dependent on consciousness. So when the I goes to sleep, the world goes to sleep, and everything is dissolved. So individuality merges with consciousness. Totality also merges with consciousness. So the world is part of that. Another way to look at it is, what is the essence of I, the individuality? The essence of the individuality is Sat Chit Ananda, the self. The essence of God, what is the essence of God? The essence of God is also Sat Chit Ananda. So when we come into the essence of our ego, our individuality, it is Sat Chit Ananda. When we come into the essence of God, it is Sat Chit Ananda. So therefore, it is like the wave. When the wave realizes I'm a wave, then there's no more, when the, word, the, when the wave realizes I'm the water, then there's no more ocean, right? The ocean is, it, it doesn't need, it doesn't identify with the ocean anymore because it says I'm not the wave, I'm water. In the same way, if the ocean says I'm not the ocean, I'm water, then there's no wave for that ocean. So that individuality and totality are only respective to one another. When the individuality, when the essence of the individuality is revealed, the essence of totality is also revealed. So when the wave says, I'm not the wave, I'm water, ocean is gone. When the ocean says, I'm not the ocean, I'm water, wave is gone. So along with the dissolution of this I, of this ego is also the dissolution of the world. Along with the falsification of the I is the falsification of the world. Now we are coming or we've been talking about how this I is false, this I is false because it dissolves in consciousness. But so too the world, so too the world dissolves in consciousness. So therefore, both of them have that as its source. It is very, I don't know if you've been watching Puja Gurudev's talks, but he says, whenever people um, inquire, he says, the question is not solved or resolved, but it is dissolved and the questioner is no more. That's a very, very beautiful thought, you know, because the intellect will always inquire. What is this? What is this? How is this? How is this possible? It will keep questioning, keep questioning. But in actuality, this question is never really solved or resolved because the one who questions is dissolved. <laughs> and that's your answer. The answer is when the questioner is, it, it dissolves. Hmm? So this is what we're trying to say. So this is one meaning of this verse, one meaning. Another meaning is this anvaham can also be taken as daily, okay? So if this anvaham is taken as daily, idam aham padam abhikyaham means that which is expressed by the word I, what happens? Ahami linake, even when that ego dissolves daily, alaya sataya, it still shines. So what is this explanation now? Why am I not this ego? Why am I not this individuality? Because when we are in deep sleep, who is in deep sleep? Who is in deep sleep? What's happening there? That ego is going to sleep. Do you just be aware of your own existence? Do you feel that there's something constant in you? Do you feel your continuous presence? Did you ever feel you were absent? Did you ever feel you were gone? In deep sleep, did you ever feel absent? Did that absence ever come to you? No, which means you are a constant presence. 
And when you j- just just inquire into deep sleep, it means you are a constant presence. You are that alaya sataya. You didn't go into laya, but that ego, it went into laya. It went into laya in deep sleep. It became absent. But you, in your whole life, you've never been absent. Now, if you just sit with this thought, just sit with this thought that you have never been absent, but my ego has been absent, then therefore there is a direct division, direct clarity that I am not this ego. That is the meaning here. Idam aham pada habikyam. That which is indicated by that word I, even if that ego goes to sleep, it becomes absent daily. I am never absent. Alaya sataya means I am never absent. What a wonder. So who is this me that is never absent? That is the self. That is the self. So if you ever want to sit quietly and know what is the self, that self is the one that's never absent throughout any state, any period of time, anywhere. And so he goes deeper into this thought. Now, somebody might ask, but how do you exactly separate it? How do you separate these two things? How do you, I need to continue to do that Viveka because I get confused. You know, we are so used to identifying with this ego every day. We are so used to it. We're not able to push it aside, set it apart. We're not able to just know it as something false. How do we keep separating it? What is the trick? So now in the next verse, he tells us how to keep this separation process. Okay, verse number 22. Vigrahendriya pranadhitamaha Nahame kasat tajadam hyasat Vigrahendriya Pranadhitamaha Nahamekasat Tadjadam Hyasat. He says, Na aham, I am not Vigraha. Vigraha means body. Indriya, Indriya means sense organs. Prana means my pranas. Vi, my intellect, my ego. You can put mind in this also. Tamaha, I am not that ignorance. Why? Ekasat, I am that one existence. I'm that one constant, continuous existence. But these are tadjadam. They are inert. And therefore, he asat. They are non-existent. They are inert, and therefore they are non-existent. So what does he mean by this? So first he's saying, just, you know, the beauty about Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi Ji is, he says, just watch your life. You don't have to read too many books. You don't have to go too crazy. Just be aware of your life. And in each of these sutras, it's like he's telling us, Pay attention to this in your life. Pay attention to this in your life. And if you and I just pay enough attention to that, we've got it. That's all. What he says here is, I cannot be all of these body, mind, intellect, etc. because they are inert. So first we will um, follow this process of thought. Before we go to inertness, the first process is, they are seen. They are observed. So I am the knower, right? 
and the knower is always different from the known. It's the first step. So first is drishyam. The knower is different from the known. Known is drishyam. Okay. So I know my body. Therefore, I am different from the body. Right. I know this book. Therefore, I am different from this book. I know this book, so I am different. I know this body. Therefore, I am different from it. When we are... Uh, now, I'm reading so much COVID stuff also because so much assistance is required everywhere. I was just thinking, if, you, if everybody knows this, that uh, they have symptoms, you know your headache, you know your cough, you know you're cold, that means you're different from it. You know your mind, that means you're different from it. You know that you have, your, your breathing is changing. That means you're different from it. Hmm? So the very fact that I know this means I am different from it. So that is number one. Pra, this body, mind, intellect, pranas, they are all known. They are all drishya. Therefore, already there's a difference there. It's very clear. This is very clear. It means you will also feel it. You don't have to do anything else. The second is yad drishyam tad jadam. Okay? That means that which is known is inert. That which is known is inert. Why is it inert? My body is known. It is inert. Inert means it cannot know itself. It cannot know itself. It needs something to illumine it. So my body is known, therefore it is inert because it needs me to illumine it. It cannot know it. It cannot know anything. It cannot know itself. Inert means it cannot know anything. It cannot know itself. My mind is inert because it cannot know anything. It cannot know itself. I know my thoughts, but my thoughts cannot know me. They cannot know me. So therefore, this is seen. This is inert. Yad drishyam tad jada. Okay? So this is seen. This is inert. Now what about this which is inert? Yad drishyam tad jadam tan nashwaram. That which is inert is Subject to destruction. What do you mean it's subject to destruction? It's subject to destruction because that which is inert depends on consciousness. It depends on me to illumine it. So, and Gurudev brought this out in his talk very beautifully, that only when we're aware of an object is it actually there. Now when I tell you cat, the cat is in your mind. Now when I tell you dog, dog is in your mind. When we are aware of the object, it is there. But when that object is not in our awareness, it is not there. So you see, it is subject to destruction. Because when that bottle, when this bottle is in my awareness, it's there. But when the bottle is not in my awareness, it's not there. It means it needs my awareness for it to be there. And when my awareness is not there, it is not there. So it's subject to destruction. So, yad drishyam tad jadam tan nashwaram. Now the next step is, if it is sometimes there and sometimes not there, then what is that? Tan mithya. Mithya means it is false. It is false. It's what we call false because it is dependently existing. It is dependently existing. It is dependent on my awareness. If my awareness is there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. It's dependently existing. When something is dependently existing, we say it is mithya. We say it is false. 
And finally, Tan Vithya is Tad Asat. It is actually non-existent. It's actually non-existent. Because actually, from the absolute standpoint, pure consciousness alone is. Pure consciousness alone is. And therefore, it's Asat. Now you take the body. We will go through this whole thing with the body. What is the body? First, it's drishyam. Drishyam means the body is seen. Drishyam. And therefore, the body is inert. It's inert because it cannot know me. It cannot know itself. It's inert. It's inert, right? And therefore, that body Yadrishyam tad jadam tad nashwaram. It is perishable, destructible, subject to destruction. What do you mean? When I'm aware of the body, it's it's there. And when I'm not aware of it, it's not there. Right? In deep sleep, it's it's there's no notion of I am the body. There's no notion of it. Then, therefore, it is mithya. Mithya, because it's dependently existing on me. When I'm aware of it, ah. Oh, Right? This body also, it, it, it's when you're sleeping and all of that, there's no feeling of the body. When we're in deep meditation, there is no feeling of the body. Therefore, it is mithya. It is false. It's dependently existing, dependent on my awareness. And finally, tad asat. From the absolute standpoint, consciousness alone is. Consciousness alone is, is that ultimate truth. Hmm? So therefore, he says, just observe your experience. One need not to do anything else, really. Just observe your daily experience. And when we go through this, then we say, this is how I'm different from it. This is how I am different from my body. This is how I am different from my mind, my intellect, and even from my ego. Even from my ego. And therefore, I remain as that pure consciousness.